So if you want to get the most out of Windows gaming on your Apple Silicon Mac, then eventually you're going to be asking the question, which is better, crossover or whiskey? And the answer to this question is not as simple as just paid versus free, but it concerns the very future of Mac gaming itself. So if you didn't already know, Crossover and Whiskey are both applications that are designed to run Windows games on Apple Silicon M series Macs. And for the most part, they perform pretty much exactly the same. In this footage of Windows DirectX 12 game Cyberpunk 2077, benchmarks and gameplay showed that there is virtually no difference in the way that they perform on identical hardware. And that's because they both make use of the same underlying pieces of technology. In this example, Cyberpunk is being run through Apple's D3 Metal, which translates DirectX 12 to the Metal Graphics API. And Crossover and Whiskey both make use of Wine, an open source compatibility layer that directly translates Windows API calls to ones compatible on macOS. Now the first big difference between Crossover and Whiskey is the version of Wine being used. At the time of recording, Crossover uses Wine version 9.19, whilst Whiskey remains frozen at version 7.7 .7 from nearly two years ago. Now on a game like Cyberpunk, you can't really see any difference, but the older version of Wine has much more of an impact on overall game and launcher compatibility. An example of this is with the Windows version of Steam, which not only loads faster using Crossover, thanks to the newer version of Wine, but also has better stability and compatibility. For example, a recently released Steam update killed compatibility with Whiskey, but didn't affect Crossover at all. Now it is possible for Whiskey users to work around this problem by downgrading Steam, but this won't work forever, and eventually Steam will probably stop working on Whiskey in the future without some drastic changes. Other launchers also work better on Crossover. For example, it's possible to install the Windows version of the Battle.net launcher, allowing games like Diablo 4 and Diablo 2 Resurrected to be run, which isn't possible on Whiskey. Same thing for launchers like GOG Galaxy, Epic Game Store, and Ubisoft Connect, giving access to Windows-only titles like Trackmania, which again, only Crossover can run. And there are plenty of other titles that only work on Crossover for one reason or another, for example, Naraka Bladepoint. Next, Crossover is more user-friendly to use than Whiskey. For example, on Crossover, if you want to install Steam, just do a search for Steam, click the Install button, and Crossover will download the Steam installer file for you and install it to a bottle automatically configured. On Whiskey, it's still simple, but requires a few more steps, including manually downloading the Windows Steam installer. And at the time of recording, you'll need to downgrade Steam in order to get this running on Whiskey. Furthermore, Crossover has a whole series of what are called cross ties, which allow you to install games like Skyrim and automatically apply the fixes necessary to get dialogue audio working properly in that game. Also, when launching games like Elden Ring, which can't run the easy anti-cheat version, Crossover will automatically launch the offline version instead. However, on Whiskey, you need to rename the offline EXE, which isn't a huge deal, but can be a pain, and just goes to show the kind of ongoing support offered by Crossover. Now, support really is the key differentiator between Crossover and Whiskey, and that's because translating a Windows game onto another operating system with a different CPU architecture is a constantly moving target. Windows games get updated and break support, and any solution needs up to the open source wine project, the main technology behind both Crossover and Whiskey. And in any conversation about wine, we have to talk about the main contributor, which is a company called Codeweavers, the very same company that created Crossover in the first place. And yes, wine is open source, which means that anyone can add to it. However, Codeweaver staff have contributed over 50% of all commits into wine, despite the fact that they make up only 4% of all wine contributors. And Codeweaver's contributions to wine are more of the heavy lifting type that drives exciting new features and developments. And the thing about Crossover is that when gamers spend money to buy a license, Codeweavers plows those funds back in to pay for more development and contribute more to the open source wine project itself. And people buying Crossover is absolutely essential to the future of wine. When I talked to former CEO Jeremy White, he said this, without people buying Crossover, there would be no Codeweavers and wine would be in a much sorrier shape. However, if you can imagine that nobody ever paid for another crossover license because they switched to the free alternative whiskey. Well, this would eventually cause a downward spiral. Code Weavers would no longer have the funds to develop wine as much as they would before, spelling the end for both crossover and ironically whiskey as well. Now this situation is acknowledged by whiskey developers themselves, and they have chosen to stick with a frozen version of wine, version 7.7, .7, also known as whiskey wine, because whiskey developers understand that they don't want whiskey to harm code weavers or one's future development. However, I think that there is a danger to whiskey becoming too popular, which is why I don't really promote it. And there is evidence that this is happening already. Whiskey's user base is much larger and more active than crossovers. When Steam broke on Whiskey, there were already dozens of posts on the Mac Gaming subreddit, and the Whiskey Discord has over 9,000 members, which is by far the largest Mac Gaming Discord server that exists. And that's a shame, because I wonder how many Whiskey users would have potentially bought a crossover license if there wasn't a free alternative. Now, I completely understand that some people just don't have the money to pay for a crossover license, and that free is better than any subscription. Firstly, remember that one year of Crossover Plus isn't strictly a subscription. You get to keep any version of Crossover released in that year forever.
Secondly, Crossover often goes on sale about three times a year. And every Cyber Monday, there is a huge discount. And the biggest that I've ever seen was getting an entire year's Crossover Plus renewal for just six pounds. And those renewals stacked. And you could have easily bought five or even 10 years of renewals for the cost of one year's license. Thirdly, if you wanted to get a year round 20% off discount, you can use the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki New. And if you click the link at the top of the description, then I'll receive a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. Anyway, I hope I've helped to explain the biggest differences between crossover and whiskey and how buying a crossover license is similar to making a donation to wine and to the future of Mac gaming. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think about crossover and whiskey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.